I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to talk about the bound staff and after you've cut a bound staff on your lathe, the fine adjustments that you might have to do to make sure that you're not in trouble when you're installing the bound staff. So as you can see, the bound staff has got a lot of things that are attached to it. You have the, uh, the roller table here. You have the impulse jewel that is attached to the roller table. You have the balance itself. And then you have the hairspring here and the collet that is installed holding the hairspring onto the balance. That's the hairspring there. And it's pretty much everything that's on the balance. And then the balance sits um, within the watch plates, as I'll show you in a second. And I'm just going to see how well my little eraser works here. Oh, look at that. Not bad. So all the dimensions here are really tricky. So when you're cutting the balance staff, you need to know the, the lengths of the various parts of the balance. So if you're looking at the lengths, as it says here, the overall length of the balance, sometimes it's difficult because you often don't have a pivot on one or the other side. And then you have to estimate how big is that pivot, right? And do some math there. Um, you could try to measure it within the plates, but that's very difficult because the um, to get an object in there to measure or a tool in there to measure within the plates is is almost impossible but you do have the existing balance and and that's what you need to use so you would measure the balance up to the point where it's where the pivot is broken right there and then if you're able to translate that to the length of the existing pivot then you might have yourself a solution there to uh, add that up and determine how long the uh, the balance needs to be scrub that up for you there um, so once you've got this overall length of the balance, you're measuring um, a bit of, you're measuring some distances here, some other, some other lengths. I shouldn't say distances. you got to learn how to lecture better. So you've got this length here, and there's a, a taper that you have here, and I've made videos on how to make a balance staff. And you should, uh, when you're doing this, you're cutting this and you're progressively adding this part here to the balance and you're moving it up as you're cutting it until it gets to the position right around here and then you're tapping it in when you're installing it so so you're kind of progressively adding this you're cutting the balance staff from this side you're cutting the balance side staff from this side inward like this so you start your cut with a with a piece of material uh, blued steel, and then you're cutting um, the parts of the balance staff progressively, like I said. So you're cutting this part here. I should have drawn that up a bit higher so it can get the hub here. But you're cutting it from this side upward, and this is your first cut right here. So you're doing this cut right here, and this material still exists. Then your second cut, you need it needs to be here I would suggest is your second cut because you want to actually cut this down to to a level and then leave extra uh, material here to allow you to cut this back and then float the balance onto onto the uh, staff so I did make a video on how to cut a balance staff so this is not why I'm talking about this problem uh, today so so you're cutting the balance staff and you think everything is good You've done a great job, the balance staff. You're eyeballing it um, and looking at the old balance staff to see if it's uh, looking exactly, the dimensions are exactly the same. So the widths are of, of, the, uh, of the various components of the balance staff are exactly what they need to be. The pivot sizes are right on the money. Um, and, and you've tested the pivots on, on both sides uh, to ensure they fit into the jewel, so you have if you have a uh, if you have a gauge like I do, your gauge would allow you to you know poke that pivot into the hole of the gauge like so, 
and then the gauge would say maybe point uh, one one two or something millimeters and that would be the size of your uh, your pivot on the end um, and of course you're leaving side shake a little tiny bit of side shake on here and that's when the uh, the balance is in place and the pivot is able to rock back and forth just a minor minor side shake because you don't want that pivot to be jammed into the jewel hole and you want um, end shake, but you can't measure the end shake um, until it's installed in the watch. So you want some side shake, and you don't want the balance, the the, the pivot, to uh, to not extend through the the uh, jewel on the watch and and hit the cap jewel on the other side. So I need another color here. Let me just erase this for a second. So so then you have the complete balance cut. Um, and I should probably do a video on how to cut a balance um, uh, and use a drawing tool to show you what, what I do when I cut a balance. So once all this is done and you're able to, you know, fit the, the balance, everything onto the, uh, onto the uh, watch, then you've got to look at another problem here. Let me see if I can flip to the second part of this. How do I do this? How do I move this? I hit done. And then I go down. There we go. And here we go again. So, so now I've got to um, erase my dot here. Uh, and let's go with red. So now I've got my um, balance installed. Uh, and it's on, <clears throat> it's installed. And as I said before, you've got a couple of settings here. So you've got the upper setting here. This is the upper jewel setting for the balance. And then you've got the lower jewel setting for the balance here. And then you've got the cap jewel. So cap jewel, CJ, CJ and the bear. It's an old show from TV. Got the cap jewel here um, on both sides. And somebody wrote me and said, how do you know how far to put the, the jewel settings down? Usually when you're looking at a, a, a pocket watch, for example, the jewel settings fit in uh, because there's a, a plate. As part of the plate, it, it, the jewel setting is just stopped right there. Hang on a second here. Now there's a plate. So there's a plate here and a plate here. And so the jewel setting goes down like this until it hits that the plate that's right here. Um, green. Uh, yeah, it hits the plate right here. So, so it does stop. The problem is if you're if you're lowering the jewel setting in this direction here, and you don't, and you have a gap here, uh, and you don't have the jewel setting setting pressed all the way down, then that could be an issue. The other problem is if you make a jewel setting, and I have a video on how to make a jewel setting as well. Uh, you could have a problem with uh, you could have a problem with how far the jewel itself is seated within the setting, so that could be an issue, and you could have the wrong dimension there. So if you find a jewel setting to reinstall it into into the watch, then and it's the right jewel setting, then there shouldn't be an issue. But if you have to make a jewel setting or adapt another jewel setting to fit into the watch, um, that then that could be an issue. Often when you have a, a broken pivot on the pocket watch, um, and I'll, I'll talk pocket watches for a second, uh, there is also a broken jewel. So this jewel, this jewel could have been busted uh, when the watch was under some sort of shock, say upward, and the pivot actually cracked the jewel. Um, the other problem I've seen in, in some watches, just recently I saw one, is that the jewel itself uh, is kind of it's rough around the edges so you have your jewel your jewel like this and you have the jewel hole and the jewel hole is not it's rough like this it's not pure so over you know a hundred years you can have the jewel hole here uh, not looking so good so that's another problem I've seen on watches and you have to replace the jewel and if you have to replace the jewel uh, sometimes that jewel won't be sitting in the setting well, good enough. So you have the jewel setting. You find an area here to draw on. You have the jewel setting. Uh, 
like this, say, and I'll just draw a simple jewel setting like that. And then you have to push the jewel. There's the jewel onto the setting and there's the hole for the jewel. And there's the cap jewel on top. I'm just a very simple drawing and your pivot goes through for your balance staff right there. But where you've actually, where that jewel actually um, sits in the setting, let's draw a little green arrow here. That could be an issue because if it's too high or too low, right? If the setting is too high or too low, then that's going to change where where the uh, the jewel is or the uh, pivot is sitting within there, which could effectively uh, cause an end shake problem or, you know, here, which could effectively move the, uh, the whole balance mechanism up and down the whole the complete mechanism up and down. Then you've got other problems and I'm going to discuss that in a second. So, so now you've cut the, uh, the balance staff. And when you cut the balance staff, you may have left the, uh, the balance a little longer. So you may have the balance itself uh, might be a little bit longer, the pivots on the end, uh, to allow you to put that into a, a, a chuck of some sort and to reduce the size of the pivots to make it fit perfectly. So now you've got a, the, the balance within the, um, or the balance staff and, and the complete balance assembly sitting in the watch. And you're saying, okay, what am I going to do here? Am I going to cut this uh, down? See if I can get a good color here for you. Am I going to cut it down on this side? Or am I going to cut it down on this side? It makes a difference. So if you cut it down on this side, right there, see if I can draw a decent arrow. <laughs> you cut it down on this side, the balance is going to go down. And as I said before, you've got, then you've got a problem because you've got the actual, the roller table sitting there like this. And you have the impulse jewel like this. And then you have the pallet fork um, that's going to be like this. And the roller jewel or the impulse jewel is entering the mouth of the pallet fork. And as I've said before, the problem then if your balance staff is cut down uh, in this direction here, then the whole balance moves downward and then your impulse jewel will your with your actual uh, your let me see what the what the heck is this thing called i'm going to yabba dabba do in a second here your thingamajabi doohickey your uh, roller table then will touch the pallet fork and then you've got an issue right here you've got friction here and that friction will cause this balance to not rotate in the right direction. It'll just be friction. So that's a big problem. And as I said before, let me just get my eraser out here, get rid of some of this, that if you have the opposite situation, so you're, you're cutting the balance on this side, you're saying, okay, I think this needs to be cut down on this side so that you're, your pivot is now effectively you're cutting this way and you're leaving, you're cutting it back this way. Um, then the whole mechanism moves upward, right? Because you're effectively moving, you're cutting this on this side, moving this upward, double arrows. I think I said the same thing twice. Then you've got your roller table again. Let's see if I can draw this. There's your roller table and your impulse jewel. And then, and then you've got your pallet fork here entering the, uh, the jewels entering the mouth of the pallet fork. And this whole mechanism then moves upward. And the problem is now your, your impulse jewel may be outside of the pallet fork and not catching the mouth of the pallet fork properly because your pallet fork is looking like a crude drawing here of the pallet fork. There's the mouth of the pallet fork like that. And then your impulse jewel is supposed to go inside the mouth of the pallet fork like this, like that. And it's attached to the roller table, it goes all the way around like this. And if 
this is if this goes upward here then that the the impulse fuel is actually outside the mouth so this is a sort of a different view of it but but it goes outside the mouth so you've got no contact now if it does if you might manage to be lucky and the impulse fuel is in the pallet fork it's probably not in it well so it's going to cause extra stress right there on that uh, impulse jewel, which might loosen the shellac on it and may cause the impulse jewel to get loose. The other problem is, as I've said before, you've got the, you've got a, a, the center wheel is right around here on a lot of pocket watches and it's going, it's tucked in right over there. So when you're installing a pocket watch, sometimes that center wheel is in the close vicinity of the balance itself. And then the problem exists right here, right within this dimension here. And you could get so tight that the center wheel actually touches the balance. So these two things touch each other um, by this all, all going up. So, so then your problem all started with trimming. Let me erase some of this stuff here. Your problem started with trimming the, uh, the balance. Um, on this side here, like this, trimming the pivot up, causing this to move upward. So that's the problem. So, so I, I did uh, think of a new way of testing a balance uh, prior to a balance staff, actually prior to uh, to installing it. And what I did was I took the, the raw balance staff, right? I, I made sure I didn't have the the hairspring wasn't in there so and this picture doesn't show the hairspring but you would normally have a, a collet right around here the collet would be here and attached and then your hairspring would be winding around like that and then attached to the the balance cock with a stud right it's pretty ugly looking hairspring eh? so it would be attached with a stud like so um, and what you do is you remove you remove the, uh, get this drawn right. You remove that, the, the sorry, the, uh, the actual uh, balance staff is on its own. It's a raw balance staff, I'll say, with nothing attached. And in this position here, you take a piece of cardboard that is around the same size as the wheel of the balance, and you put that cardboard onto the balance um, staff install it and then you put the cardboard and the balance staff into the watch so you've got basically this dimension here and you've got this dimension here and then you're able to, to see whether that cardboard uh, is spinning free which tells you first of all that the holes in the pivots on the upper and lower pivots um, your, your, your pivot of the balance is actually fitting inside the jewel so you're not having any issues right here. See if I can press this, okay. Not having any issues right here because your pivot is fitting inside the, the jewel on the top. Um, and its end shake is good, which means that that little tiny distance between the pivot. So if I draw, draw a pivot, let's see if I can do this here. If I draw a pivot like this and I draw the jewel uh, like this, and there's one side and there's the other side. And let's say the jewel stops right here. So I've got myself a, uh, I'm gonna draw this a bit differently. There's a the jewel like this. That's the pivot for the, uh, not the jewel, the, uh, the balance staff pivot. So that's the balance staff pivot. And then you have the cap jewel going over here like that. And there's your cap jewel and right where the capsule right where the pivot touches the capsule which is right here there should be the slightest gap right there and i think someone wrote me the other day and, and said your end shake there should be a gap on your end shake just the slightest gap not not so it's not absolutely squeezed in there touching on both sides so the, the balance itself here is not squeezed in there there's a little bit of room on both sides here and here. So that's your end shake. So, so in the, in this test, uh, test system where you're taking the balance and you're putting a piece of cardboard like this, 
and you're testing it, the first thing you do is you spin it with a with an with a bit of air to see whether it's actually spinning, and then you can actually see what the uh, the end shake is on both in both sides of the uh, of the balance staff. So that's a really good way of testing it before you install for the different parts of the balance. So you, once you've got it, you know, you know that's working there. You still have the, you still could have the issue depending on how you cut the various shoulders. So if you made a mistake cutting the shoulder here and where that started and cutting the shoulder here and where that started, then it's going to matter where this is sitting on the balance. Um, so any mistake in cutting the balance could cause this to go up or down and could cause, as I said before, you've got your uh, your roller table here and your impulse jewel here, and that could also cause that to go up or down. So it could be go this way or that way, and the, all of the problems I said um, could exist for that. So, so that's sort of the situation, and ha not having that balance perfectly positioned in here could be the problem. So the other thing is, once you've done this, um, the, there's there's the there's little ability to to fix the problem if your staff is not cut properly. So if you have issues um, where the the equipment is positioned or the various parts of the balance are positioned on your staff, then you've got problems likely on both ends here. And then you're going to have problems with this sitting inside the uh, upper and lower jewel and the cap jewel and end shake being wrong. So cutting the balance staff, absolutely perfect. It needs to happen. Um, adjusting the balance staff uh, after you've cut it can be a problem. Let me go back to the other diagram for a second. See if I can do that. There we go. Yeah, so now I've cut my balance and I need to make sure that this, when I after I cut the balance, that I leave a little space on this side, right? So it's actually cut a little longer on this side, and I cut it a little longer on that side. If I can, there we go. Look at that wonderful drawing. So then this dimension ends up being like this and like this, right? So it's a little bit longer on both sides. Um, that way, when I put it into the balance, uh, into the watch movement, um, I can trim it and understand exactly where it needs to be to get that end shake. So it's a little bit of a laborious thing, but if you're if you actually cut your balance and you and you're able to, you know, not install the various components of the balance, you're not installing the the uh, the actual balance itself onto the balance staff. You're not putting on the hairspring call it you're not putting on the roller table you just have your raw balance like this and as i said you install that piece of cardboard we just clean this up a bit you install a piece of cardboard uh, on yeah, there we go you install a piece of cardboard on the balance right here like that and all then you can actually put this balance into the into the uh, watch so if it's sitting inside the jewel on both sides like this and this fits really nicely and there's your cap jewel on here and let me just scrub that up a little bit and you've got end shake um end shake right here Let's see if i can draw that there's end shake there and the other side has got a similar situation <clears throat> where you have the actual jewel setting is is too tight let's say it's here it's a crappy drawing folks <coughs> there's a cough for you uh, the jewel setting is here and the jewel setting is here but it's too tight and it's too tight right here it's starting to ride into where the taper is on the pivot um, then you have an issue and you you have to disassemble all of that stuff and then you have to cut away the the balance here and you're virtually shortening the balance here you're basically cutting it here and you're moving the balance virtually in this direction here so which is shortening it and if you shorten the balance in this direction here 
then this whole mechanism goes this way. Like the whole darn thing goes that way. And as I said before, you could have problems with the pallet fork uh, and how it's fit in, how, how the mouth of the pallet fork and the impulse tool get in there. It could be over here instead of over here. Um, and you could have the balance itself touching the plates. So if you cut it away here, you've got to make sure you're not causing this problem over here, right? So that uh, is a not, no fun. So actually taking a balance and cutting a balance, a new balance, and then installing it and fitting it can be a lot of trial and error, I'll say, and it can be super frustrating. So this is a chat about that. So if you have any questions about this, just let me know, um, and I'll try to explain it. Uh, but uh, the, the, the general, what I'm saying here is is to actually have the balance a little bit longer on both ends, right, where the pivots are, to allow you to either cut cut it back from this side or cut it back from this side. But it's going to impact where the balance itself sits in the uh, in the uh, watch movement, which, as I've explained before, could cause all kinds of fun, so all kinds of different problems. So anyway, that's my chat today. And somebody said he was hoping that I could draw all kinds of pictures and make a mess and stuff like that. So, so here we'll we'll draw a picture of a watchmaker. There's a watchmaker. A couple of arms, a couple of legs. Uh, the watchmaker's visor. There's a eyepiece there. Uh, the watchmaker has a little bit of hair. So there's the watchmaker. Um, and there's the part that hit the carpet and is buried inside the carpet. There you go. Look at that. And the watchmaker is looking down in that direction and saying, I know I dropped that small part there somewhere and it's going to take me two hours to find it. Or I'm going to go on my lathe and I'll make a new one. So there's my watchmaker guy. And on the other side uh, here, I've got a picture of there we go there's a picture of a tool that the guy just bought and it's got a uh, call it in here like that and now he's thinking why the hell did i buy this <laughs> so that's it that's my talk for today um hopefully I, my rambling wasn't too confusing i hope you enjoy this format um I'm going to be reassembling a, a watch very soon, and if you watch this to the end, you'll know that uh, that I did get the case back off of the uh, of that watch, the pocket watch I've been repairing. So a big, 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 huge thank you to everybody out there who's watching my channel who helped me with that problem. Um, and what I ended up doing, I didn't glue anything onto the back of the watch, so I had the the actual uh, bezel like this, there's a crystal like this, and then I had the bezel of that crystal like that, and then it was screwed on to the actual watch movement, which would have been like this. And I took one of those big balls, and I, when I put it down the first time, the ball squished down onto the crystal like this, and I pushed down like that, and it wouldn't turn the actual bezel. This part here, uh, what it did was twist the crystal. So what I did was I pushed down even harder, my 20th try, I think, and I finally got this rubber ball to go down deep enough to hit the edge of that, of the actual bezel, and that allowed me to twist it off. It took a lot of force, but I finally got that off. But thank you very much for, for everybody out there who helped me solve that problem.